First of all, I had a chance to talk to President Erdogan this week uh, and reiterated uh, what we said from the earliest reports that a coup uh, was being attempted in Turkey, and that is that we strongly reject any attempt to overthrow uh, democracy in Turkey, that we support the democratically elected government there, uh, and uh, I think one of the uh, signs of great strength in the Turkish people was the fact that even strong opponents of President Erdogan, uh, when reports of the coup were taking place and when it was still uncertain uh, who exactly was behind it, uh, even opponents of President Erdogan pushed back hard against the idea that the military uh, should overthrow uh, a democratically elected government. Uh, any reports that we had any previous knowledge of a coup attempt, that there was any U.S. involvement in it, that we were anything other than entirely supportive of Turkish democracy, are completely false, unequivocally false. And I said that to President Erdogan. And I also said to him that uh, he, need to make, he needs to make sure that not just he, but everybody in his government understand that those reports are completely false. Uh, because when rumors like that start swirling around, uh, that puts our people at risk on the ground in Turkey. And it threatens what is a critical alliance and partnership between the United States and Turkey. So uh, I, I want to be as clear and unequivocal as I can be. We deplore the attempted coup. We said so earlier than just about anybody and have been consistent throughout that the Turkish people deserve a government uh, that was democratically elected. Now, uh, what is true is, is that uh, President Erdogan and Turkey uh, have a strong belief that Mr. Golan, here in the, uh, who's in Pennsylvania, a legal resident of the United States, uh, uh, is somehow behind some of these, uh, some of these efforts. And what I said to President Erdogan is the same thing that I would say to you. Uh, and anybody else who asks, which is we have a process here in the United States for dealing with uh, extradition requests uh, made by foreign governments. And it's governed by treaties and it's governed by laws. And uh, it is not a decision that I make, but rather a decision that uh, our Justice Department and investigators and uh, courts make alongside uh, my administration in a very well-structured uh, and uh, well-established process. So uh, the, 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 I told President Erdogan uh, that uh, they should present us with evidence that they think uh, uh, indicates uh, the involvement of Mr. Golan or anybody else who, who's here in the United States, and it would be processed the way that it is always processed, uh, and that we would certainly take any allegations like this seriously. But America is governed by rules of law, uh, and those are not ones that uh, the President of the United States or anybody else can just set aside for the sake of expediency, even when uh, we are deeply supportive of Turkish democracy, and even when we care deeply about uh, uh, any attempts to overthrow their government uh, or any other illegal actions, uh, we've got to go through a, a legal process. Um, finally, with respect to uh, what's happening in the aftermath of the coup attempt, uh, in my conversations with uh, President Erdogan, I think in statements by John Kerry and others, uh, what we have indicated is uh, our strong belief and hope that uh, as the dust settles, there is not 
uh, a overreaction that could in some fashion uh, lead to uh, a curtailment of civil liberties or uh, a weakening of the ability of legitimate opposition uh, or journalists through uh, legal processes to voice their concerns uh, and to petition their government, uh, and that the United States, uh, as a friend and partner of Turkey's, uh, and me personally, as somebody who's worked with President Erdogan uh, for a long time now, uh, would encourage that uh, you know, the manner in which this coup is investigated and people are held accountable uh, and justice is done uh, is consistent with uh, rule of law uh, and uh, the basic freedoms that I think the Turkish people um, have fought for and defended. Uh, and, and obviously, you know, we can't discount how scary and shaken not just the Turkish government is, but uh, Turkish society is. Imagine if you had some rump group of military officials here in the United States who started flying off with F-16s or uh, other artillery and were taking shots at government buildings and people were killed and injured, uh, uh, people would be scared, uh, and right, rightfully so. Uh, but one of the challenges of a democratic government uh, is making sure that even in the midst of emergencies and passions, uh, we make sure that rule of law and uh, the basic precepts of justice uh, and liberty prevail. Uh, and my hope is, is that that is what will uh, emerge. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we will continue to work with Turkey uh, even as they try to stabilize the situation. Uh, the, our base at Inserlik, uh, from which we are going after ISIL hard, uh, is up and running us uh, again, and we continue to work with them uh, to make sure that uh, we don't lose momentum uh, that we've built in terms of weakening ISIL's position in Syria uh, and uh, to try to strengthen the prospects for some resolution of that, uh, that terrible conflict.